Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Hey Santee, can you talk about the replica revolvers like the Denix? Josh Bradeen. Hmm, replica six guns, eh? We can do that. Some countries who watch this channel can't own real six guns due to their restrictive laws. That doesn't stop them. They do shows with blank guns or just have non-firing replicas in their holsters. We can talk about blank guns another time, but today, let's look at the replica guns. Excluding toy cap guns, my first awesome six gun was a non-firing replica. Here in America, they don't generally sell real revolvers to 12 year olds. That gun is gone now, but in the 90s, I bought another one just to practice fast draw and gun spinning with. That dummy gun was made by a Japanese company called Marushin. These are similar in size and weight to the real McCoy and the actions work the same way. However, the chambers of the cylinder are plugged as is the barrel. Also, each chamber is made smaller so you can't fit a cartridge in. Another safety measure is the firing pin won't clear the frame. This one, like many of the others, is made of a cheaper metal that wouldn't hold up to the rigors of live ammo anyway. So yeah, it ain't never gonna shoot. In the 1960s and 70s, Japan was producing a lot of different replica model guns. Manufacturers like MCG, CMC, and Marushin were flooding the market. They were so close to the originals that the Japanese government had to put regulations on their design and production so they wouldn't be confused with real firearms. Many of these companies are no longer making them, and the energy nowadays is going towards authentic looking airsoft guns. Denix from Spain came on the market in 1967, and today produces a large variety of different replica firearms. The Denix is pretty close to a real gun, although the action doesn't feel as crisp and reliable as the Marushin. However, they sure look the part, and ironically I've seen them in many westerns made over the last 25 years. For close-ups, the filmmakers likely would use a real gun, as the fake ones can be easy to spot. And of course, some of the design aspects are incorrect. In Red Dead Redemption, the artists decided to use this kind of appearance on what were supposed to be real guns, is did not exist on the real Colt. Some models have channels on the cylinders that give them away. Also, the finish can look too distressed, giving the appearance of a museum piece as opposed to a 10-year-old firearm. Model kits like LS and Pyro produced plastic guns that looked darn good. I recall building one by Ravel, and the action actually worked. These do pop up on the collector's market from time to time. I've also seen some 3D printer plans for replicas that look really detailed. In some Western documentaries or films, the budget allows for only these replica guns, and they put the gunfire and smoke in post-production. One classic mistake is showing a firing gun without ammo in it, which I've caught before. For the cap and ball models, even painting the top half of the nipples to emulate that percussion cap goes a long way to authenticity. You can get them in different barrelings and finishes, and the grips are even pretty good looking. Some have that orange plastic plug on the end of the barrel to indicate it's not real. If you're looking to be as authentic as you can, go for one that doesn't have that or remove it if possible. Replicas are great for gun spinning practice as well, and it's easier on your real gun if you're just starting out. If you drop a replica, you only risk breaking a $70 dummy gun compared to breaking a $500 firearm. This is one of the two replica guns I bought for the James Gain robbery in Jackson, Missouri. I bought these because we have riders that want to take part in the train robbery and of course don't come prepared with a prop gun like this. And indeed that's what they're good for. What can you do with a gun like this? Well, you can spin it, you, you know, you can do all your regular stuff you can do with a single action. Uh, you can even fast draw if you want to. 
If you're interested in making these a part of your wardrobe, I'll put some links in the description field on where to get them. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.